brotherhood, blank, blank, Jim, pro Jim, conversation, kinetic, buddy, about the big chin. This is Black Brotherhood language approaching conversation kinetically about fiction motherfucking Monday. This is black as fuck. What is going on? My name is Alexander Asafa. That guy right there in my corner. I'm going to blow his picture up. That is uh, the one and only uh, B.W.A. Alt. Walt. Walt. You got a different hat on today. I got hats today, bro. You know that. Yeah, you rocking the Winter Soldier mask, though. The, That's the mood I'm in right now. Niggas got me waiting and shit. <laughs> yeah, you were. Adding, that's not the note, but. No, that's more more psycho. You know what I'm saying? More stab your ass in the, in the tub. <laughs> With a wig on and a dress. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how we feeling? Possibly. Um, Great movie. Great movie. But possibly. possibly speaking. Um, all right, man. Well, I do apologize for the record to the public, to the 12 people that are going to see this and hear it. 14. Um, 14. 14. Four, we, hey, hey, we almost saw Apple Podcasts. We're almost there. <laughs> 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 we almost there. We're going to get there one day. But um, to the other, uh, we actually doubled our numbers. So it's not 12 no more. It's not even four. It's like a, it's like a legit, like 30 now, like a legit for real, for real. So um, we thank you. We appreciate y'all. Um, yeah, we got on some more uh, distribution channels and we picked up, I think we got on about four or five more. We picked about seven, eight more followers. So a, every piece Every piece of progress is is a good thing. So, but uh, let's get to it. As we are recording this, the Eternals uh, trailer was dropped today, two motherfucking day. And uh, B, what you think? What what's going? What what did you you saw the trailer right? You did your homework. You know, I did not send you the fucking clips. Wait a minute. You think I just find clips and don't look at them before I send them? Yes, of yes, course you've done I that saw, before. Well, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. To be fair, I've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this would, be, this, this would be a great, great topic. Did you read about it? No, nah, nigga, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. We're going to do that shit in real time. Nah. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. That should look, that should look all right. But see, you know, it's Marvel. Marvel has a formula. Marvel likes, yeah. to, Marvel likes to Lego all their movies. So... It didn't surprise me uh, at all that it was good. But like I said in the notes to you that, you know, people have been talking about how to bridge the mutants and uh, I guess they call them metahumans or superhumans. And the Eternals actually talks about what well, in the comic book. I don't know how familiar you are, you are with the comic book. The actual oh, I, I did a little homework. I didn't want to come unprepared. So, yeah. Uh, Okay, well, you, you had 17 extra minutes to read up on it, so. Okay, okay, we however, have a theme going this episode. Okay. However, okay. however, <laughs> this, 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 it sounds like a, <laughs> a baby seal. No, but the Eternals, the, in the history, you know, the Eternals are a group of people that super human folks has been around for forever. I don't even know if you would can, consider them superhuman. They're like humanoid created by the celestials to, you know, kind of look after the planet, right? Um, But that whole story kind of delves into the origins of the metahumans and how people can be super powered and, and, and even to some level of mutants. So I'm guessing, I'm hypothesizing postulating that they're going to use this as a way to try to bridge, you know, along with the multiverse shit, try to bridge mutants and all the other folks. Which, so I'm looking forward to it. It looks good. I mean, the, the trailer looked dope. So I'm with it. 
you're saying they'll, they'll use the humanoids to do to be the tie-in to uh, bringing in uh, all the Marvel, Fox, now Disney properties? Well, they say, okay, so you know the, the, the origin of mutants, right? Like they say one of the oldest mutants, uh, I believe, is Apocalypse. But That's right. People always be looking around like, well, how the mutants began? I mean, Apocalypse got started, but how the mutants actually... You know, so the eternal story kind of addresses that. It was like some experimentation going on with proto-humans, you know, like the the cavemen, maybe even before that, them types. Um, right. To kind of condition humans in the future to be able to develop superpower mutation and to be able to develop metahuman abilities or shit like that. So like, it's basically like a primer. You know, like when you paint a house, you got to put the, the primer on first. So the coat of stick is kind of the same thing. They priming humankind to be super powered. But I mean, it's, it's a lot deeper than that, but it's in the comics. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, that's a very uh, unique metaphor you just I'm just saying, you know, you know what a primer is, right? You know, I, I, I know uh, what primer is, but you just compared the beginning of the, uh, you know, mankind, you know, you just sort of slid that in to the same category. Slid it in. I don't, listen, Chicago, I don't need your gang signs here. This is a professional rated PG-13 (laughs) episode, good sir. We don't do that around here. None of that. I apologize. On the G. On the G, yes, to the th- to the thirty people that are watching, um, the cast is beastie. Uh, yeah, Gemma Chan, Richard Madden, Brian Tyree Henry, uh, Kamal Najani, Angelina Jolie, whoop. Kit Harrington, whoop, whoop. John Snow. And motherfucking Selma Hayek and her fine ass. I said it, I mean it, and I mean every piece of it. Yes, indeed. Thank you, whoever casted her. Everybody else, okay. Her, we support this message. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, they they kind of also Wu Tang shit or Akatsuki, depending on what you're into, what your flavor is. Uh, a lot of a lot of names. Um the trailer looked good. Uh, you know, it, it's it's being directed by um, Chloe. Uh, what's what's her name? I don't want to get her name wrong. I got it right here. Uh, Chloe Zhao, uh, who just won uh, Best Director Academy Award for No Man Land. Mm-hmm. Uh, she also uh, is a co-writer on the script. And um, I remember Kevin Feige talking about a little bit out like he loves what she's doing with it so far. Um, I'm definitely going to see it. Uh, it looks, I'm a fan of just about everybody that's been casted. Uh, not just Selma Hayek. There is a rumor that's been looming for about two years now that, uh, Miss Millie Bobby Brown is actually secretly in the movie. She's got a secret role in the movie. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. I'm a Stranger Things fan as well. Uh, but but a lot of people were mad about the uh, the ending, you know, with the uh, Marvel fans themselves were mad about how the trailer ended with them, you know, sitting at the table talking trash about like, well, who's going to lead the Avengers now that Tony and Captain America are gone? Iron Man and Captain America are gone. And uh, Richard Madden playing Icarus says he can do it. And they kind of laugh. The fans got mad like, motherfucker, if y'all know, was watching that shit, why don't y'all do something? Like, as if like, they could have actually kept Robert Downey around or some shit. <laughs> it was uh, it's kind of like breaking the fourth wall, but from a uh, geek nerd standpoint, you know what I mean. But the, the thing about it, was, it, is it was that, that argument. That argument goes throughout the Marvel comics. It's like, well, Spider Man be dealing with some shit. Well, why the fuck the Avengers ain't helping him out? Because it ain't on his level. They they that's not they level of shit. Like why would Thor come all the way from Asgard to slap the shit out of 20 criminals. Like, like fucking 
bank robbers. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like there's levels to this shit. Well, if you that, if you've been yeah. around, if you call it the Eternals, that means your ass been around for a very long time, and you ain't worried about a Thanos. You kind of like, you know, for sure, Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh. Whatever. <laughs> like they're watching the TV or something. Hey, he's gonna do the snap. Look at it. Look at it. Here you go. Oh wow, wow, he did it. He killed half. So it's kind of like them watching the TV. They're watching the movie with us. That's yeah, very. I, uh, mean, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of. Uh, beans it's mad in the you, Brian. There's a lot of beans in the Marvel universe that could have quote unquote done some shit to stop Thanos and them, but it's probably not on their level. So they're like, eh, you know, it don't affect me. That ain't my problem. Well, apparently, that's that. There were hints of something even stronger than Thanos in the trailer, which makes them uh, switch their stance in terms of what's going on. I think they even said in the narrative. So um, whatever the externals are about to get into apparently is uh, stronger than Thanos himself, which is um, interesting to think about. And Marvel's never been the best when it comes to villains either. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Thanos, I thought, was their best one. That was their most flushed out villain so far. Oh, you're talking about the MCU. I thought you're not talking about overall, like the, no, 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 no. I'm I'm talking the, just the cinematic universe. Yeah, because there's a shit ton. There's a shit ton of superpower villains to make Thanos look like a, a mad teenager. There's a bunch of them out there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, so, with the Eternals, <laughs> I mean. With that so I'm looking forward to seeing what what happens. Um, of course, you know they're going to tie everything in, and the thing that they do, you know, with every phase, they they try to up the ante. So um, Thanos being an end all be all of the previous phase, like you know, this is the guy we got to handle. So of course they got to bring another motherfucker in. It's like Thanos, who fuck Thanos, and then if you start to include the mutants and shit, like. It opens up a whole new world of possibility when you talk a villain. When you talk a villain, villain. If we're if we're if the if if the X Men and the mutants are like neighbors to this ex, uh, uh, Eternals situation, no, there's a lot to play with here, for sure, for sure. Uh, you mentioned them already, uh, Apocalypse. So, um, you know. Which is kind of hard to say if he's actually a, a greater threat uh, threat than Thanos, but I think in ways he could be. I think he's more popular, but that's that doesn't say much. But I, I mean, either way, like you, I, you're absolutely right. Marvel's got the villains, the comic books. I mean, my, you know, you're Magneto. I'm Doom. Technically, those are two very villainous characters uh, for the most part. Um, Magneto's not a villain. It says a guy that is nicknamed Magneto. Magneto's not a villain. Magneto is the... He's misunderstood? Is that what it is? He's the Malcolm X of the mutants, okay? He's not a villain. That, I never said he wasn't Malcolm X, okay? That, well, you you want to play a guitar? You want me to leave you alone with you and your guitar right now? You what are you I, talking about? You want to play with me? I'll pick it up. It's right there. I know, I, I, I know you have a guitar at the headquarters. That's... I will bring, pick it up. You gonna play the Magneto theme song with the Winter Soldier mask? <laughs> I'm gonna play the X Men intro. That shit is funny because whenever you hear it, you have to like hum the shit. Like, you can't hear it and just not boom, boom, boom. Yeah, no. See, you can't no, even help it. You're trying to fight it. You're trying to fight it, but if I kept going, you would help. No. Nah. No, nah, I'm not going to fight it. You can play that shit for that guitar. <laughs> I'm with the shits. I'm with the shits. All right, well, that's boom, 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 boom. All right, well, let's <laughs> let's keep going. Um, So, let's keep it in the MCU for a minute. We're going to be jumping in and out of this all episode. but And I'm only bringing this up because I've seen this from various outlets within the last three or four days. There is a very potentially significant rumor 
that Disney is looking to purchase DC Comics. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Some would call that a monopoly. I, I don't know. No, that is that that's been the only word that's been slung around as of late. Um but here's the thing is, well, how do you feel about this? Let me let me slide this piece of food your way. You gonna eat it? You gonna put it back in the microwave? You are gonna throw this shit out? What you gonna do with this? First of all, first of all, I don't use a microwave unless I absolutely have to because it makes the chicken. Oh my god! When you just compare mankind to primer, but you matter. When you reheat, when you reheat chicken in the microwave, it gets rubbery. So that's not my thing. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, that's good. How do Thank I, you. So is this okay? I'm gonna throw it back at you. Disney is buying what exactly? The DCU or all of DC? I had to unmute myself. Bro, I said DC Comics. All of it. So the DC Comics? DC Comics. And the DCU and... That ca- that comes... It's just, just think Fox, but bigger. It's everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, maybe... uh. Maybe they'll finally make some worth worthwhile movies. So that's what you're looking for. Look, I don't look. I don't think Disney's not stupid. You notice they're taking things that are already money makers and then kind of letting them do what they were already doing. You don't really see. I mean, they incorporate a little bit of the Disney shit into, but it's not like to the point to where it's like you don't recognize what it is. A lot of people. Shout out to a Star Wars fan. <laughs> I am a Star Wars fan, and I'm. And I'm I was about to actually address that the last three movies. The last three movies. The last three movies. Like that's where we had our biggest issue. Like, you know, like I said, Disney does put their thumbprint on it at certain places, but I feel like they get shit that's already making bread and kind of just, you know, just. Go out there, my child, and then if they do some, if if you do some shit they don't like, then it's like okay, now I'm gonna step in. But I mean, it might be a good thing for DC. Um, might be a good thing. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? We were both born in the '80s. Who'd have thought that Disney was gonna control the world? Next, the niggas is gonna buy healthcare. Watch. Watch. I don't see. I don't see why they haven't done it. But that's a whole nother conversation. Um, they're gonna buy Amazon and they're gonna buy healthcare, <laughs> and Disney is gonna effectively run the entire planet. You know, I'm actually a bit torn by this because I think creatively, you're right. If this were to happen, this could be a very good thing for the DC properties. Now, but see. As I'm saying it, I'm like, watch them get all the live action shit right, and then all the animated should be trash now. Then I ain't got nothing ah. to do Saturday and Sunday. Right. You know right. what I mean? See, that's 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 the thing. Because they have right. to put their stamp on it somewhere. So it's like right. where the fuck you stamping this shit at? Like <laughs> Right. 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 And and Marvel don't know what the fuck they're doing when it comes to the animated shit. It's okay. The 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 Spider-Man cartoons are solid, I will say that. But the movies. Nah, they don't compare. Um, and I did want to see a crossover on a live action, like feature film scale, DC versus Marvel, but I didn't want to see it this way. I wanted to kind of, well, you know, I was hoping WB would get their shit together and make themselves formidable against Disney and then do it that way, like they did in the comic books. With uh, with the uh, amalgam joints, um, I mean, if it wouldn't surprise me, I think it'd be great for the live action. I really do. Uh, I just didn't want to see it. I like competition. Yeah, I like exactly. Like, you know, I, I guess as as idealistic as that sounds, I just like the competition of like, hey, they're doing this over there. Y'all doing this over here. What y'all going to do? You going to let them just beat the shit out of y'all? Years and years and years, you know what I mean? But I think it could be good. I mean, because who doesn't want to see 
the X Men versus suit, uh, the Justice League. Like, I want to see that. Nah, man. Look, like I said, if they do go ahead and buy this thing, they can own it and it can still be a separate entity from Marvel. Um, it'll still be a level of competition there. I think don't Coke own Pepsi and they compete for sales, but Coke own Pepsi. Don't it? Don't it? <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty sure I Coke, the, the owners of the, some of I'm at to look that up. I'm just saying. I know Facebook know uh, I know Facebook owns Instagram, and I know every social media app is turning into some version of Instagram. You post, you put a story. And then you wait for the response <laughs> across the fucking board. But, um, yeah. I, oh, no, they don't. I'm sorry. They could they could potentially keep it separate. But you know they not. They don't. They, that's, they, like you said, they're going to, if they were to do that, they're going to find a way to put their stamp on it somehow, some way. And I don't know. Because then we would lose. Because if that happens, bro, we would lose movies like uh, Todd Phillips' Joker. That's Disney's not going to do that. That's nothing Disney-like at all. Matter of fact, that shit was so good. Todd Phillips, the director um, of Joker, he even, this is how fucking stupid DC is, or Warner Brothers, he pitched to them, right, movie's amazing. It's, a, it's someone. It's like someone gave an independent film a high budget, and they made it work. Todd Phillips suggested to uh, Warner Brothers to do like a DC Black series of all different like characters similar to the Joker, just a deep dive into the psychology and their background. And you could do that with anybody in uh, Batman's Rogues Gallery. Any one of those characters would work in that same formula. Have they done anything since? No. What, nope. What, Joker came out, what, two years ago now? Like, come on, man. But that's why it almost gives credence to why maybe Disney should get DC, which is fucking nuts to say. Literally. It's absolutely nuts. But, I mean, shit, Trump was president. I mean, anything is possible, right? Uh, I just had to do it. I had to. Uh, I had to. I'm having I had a good to. day. I'm having a good day. Let's just keep moving. <laughs> we have to bring up the anus of society. 45. I'm on number three. Let's get to number three. <laughs> all, all Filipino and Filipino American stars and Netflix highly anticipated series, the anime series, uh, Tresse. You um, saying that right? I have no idea, bro. None. I know it's spelled T R E S E. I'm sure there's a hyphen in there and an accent somewhere, but uh, Apple knows don't carry all that. So um, let's see who's in it: Shay Mitchell, Griffin Putois, uh, Campbell, Bante, Matt Yang King, Dominic John John Briones, Zamul, Steve Bloom, Nicole Schlesinger. They got it. Lou, Lou Diamond Phillips. It's a huge cast, too. I can tell you right now, though, Nicole Schlesinger and Steve Bloom ain't Filipino, but um, yeah, what'd you think of the trailer, son? What you thinking? How you feeling? That shit, that shit look fire. I didn't know anything about it. It makes me want to go look. Boy, that shit look fire, though. The storyline itself? I will fuck with yeah. it. I will fuck with it. Um, I mean... I'm a, you know what? It's it becomes just sort of a petty thing for me now. It looks better than Yasuke, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> right, the first three minutes. <laughs> right, right. Um, old girl, old the girl animation, was a beast, bro. Old girl was a beast. Right. Um. I'm I'm glad that uh, you know. Diversity and inclusion is absolutely necessary. So I'm I'm glad for those reasons. The animation, see, the thing is, you just when well, you just finished watching Castlevania, right? Uh, I'm in the middle of season four. Okay, so you all right, well, so you ain't but the shit what I've seen. Yeah, but you've seen something, right? Right. The shit is that shit is nice. Yeah. That shit is beastie. Um 
from what I saw in the trailer for Tresse, and I hope I'm saying that right, you can get the comic book at uh, Atomic Basement in Long Beach. Just talk to Mike Wellman. He's going to take care of you. Say black as fuck sent you to the 30 people that are listening. Let me get back. I digress. Um, the animation in comparison to Castlevania season four, which I just finished, um, it does not hold up. So that was the thing that's sort of uh, kind of like, okay, maybe there's more to it. I'll probably check it out. I'll, I'll, I'll give it an episode and see what happens. Can't make any, uh, you know, confirmations other than that, but I'll give it, I'll give it a one shot and see. I gave Yasuke one and ended up watching the whole thing, but that's a whole personal sort of thing right there. But yeah, yeah, that is out. Tresse comes out when? Now, see, it's got some competition, B. That's June 11th. You know what comes out in June? What comes out in June? Uh, there's this uh, guy going to be on Disney Plus, uh, mischievous, mischievous type of guy. His name's Loki. I don't know. Maybe you've heard of him. Um, yeah, he's coming out June 5th. So I've there's been that. falling for 30 minutes. Of course. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so it's got, so it's got some comp, you know, Tresse has some comp, but yeah, we'll check it out. I'm we'll check it out. It's, it's not like, it's not like, it's not like. You know what I'm saying? You got to go to the theater to see the shit and you got to plan your day out. Nigga, one is on. Watch one at this time, one at this time. There's no real competition. Well, you know, there's been a slot open because of Invincible. You know, they need to take a break. But, um, yeah, I just really missed Invincible and I wish Yasuke was better. And uh, I'm just going to watch my Loki in peace. That's all I got to say about that. Moving on. Let's stay with the uh, Disney Plus situation. Um, The Ironheart series set to debut on Disney Plus has tapped Chinaka Hodge to serve as head writer, according to Variety. Um, Ms. Hodge is a screenwriter, poet, playwright, and educator. Her past writing credits include the Apple reboot of Amazing Stories, as well as the TNT series adaptation of uh, Snowpiercer, starring David Diggs. She has published two books of poetry to date for Girls with Hips, Collected Poems and Writings, and Dated MCs, while her plays include Chasing Mahershala (laughs) and Mirrors in Every Corner. Um... You know, now, for those that don't know, Ironheart is about Riri Williams, a young black super genius girl in the MCU. She uh, was debuted, excuse me, in the comics in 2016. Um, B. Walt, this is your replacement. She, uh, she gets a hold of your Tony Stark Iron Man armor, reverse engineers it to make a copy of her own and does it because she's that sm- fucking smart. How does it feel to be replaced by a young black girl? It's about time. That's very political of you. Uh, it's about time. I, I know how you really feel, but that's, that was good for the people. They're going to love you. They're going to love you. What are you talking about? No, I'm good. I'm with that. To see how they do it. Well, you know, there's a lot of black girl magic going on. Uh, you know, I that's... That's dope. Never, I've never read Ironheart. Um, my team of specialists have told me about it several times. Um, Shanaka Hodge, I, you know, it, it it makes sense. I think this is a job well done for Disney. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I, I'm definitely interested. Uh, it's it's live action, so that'll be cool. And I think this is a good way to sort of incorporate her if they want to move forward, like phase five and they want to brought, bring her into a movie one of the uh feature film joints so yeah yeah we're gonna check it out that is set to debut in 2022 hmm. let's keep going uh keith miller author keith miller and director terrence day are the 
black men, let me make that clear, creative forces behind the uh, Pretty the Animation, which is a 20-minute animated short that reimagines the typical queer coming-of-age story by replacing black trauma with black joy and discovery through the lens of an into, uh, intentional black experience. What? Yeah. Yep. Pretty. Spelled P-R-I-T-T-Y. Yeah. Based out of a character um, from, I believe, Kevin Miller's roots, uh, Savannah, Georgia. Um, they kick-started um, the whole situation. They Initially, the two were going to do a, a live-action film about the story. Uh, Kevin Miller is the original author. And um, and then he connected with uh, Terrence, Terrence Day. And um, the pandemic got in the way of doing the live action. So then they went to Kickstarter and um, decided that they would move forward with an animated short of, this, uh, of the story. And they were looking to get $50,000. And B. Walt, they were able to acquire $114,000, over $114,000 for the project. So, um, Again, a lot of a lot of diversity in this episode right here of Black as Fuck on this Monday. Yes, it is. Um, what are your thoughts on Pretty? I don't know. I don't know enough about it to make any kind of to talk about it. But I mean, diversity is good, right? So I'm with it. I mean, I don't know. I mean, the, the description you gave just sound sounded like it was very corporate speak in the sense that it didn't tell me nothing. So I'm gonna have to go back and look. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go read it on my own. Cause... Well, the, like I said, Kevin Miller's the author. Um, he's had the he he wrote the original story over a decade ago. Um, it was a it was a novel, but it was never published. Um, Day went to Morehouse College. He's a, he's an alum from there, um, and that's where I. I would say that's where they met and then they connected. Um, and this is a quote from Kevin Miller, the author himself, for young people in this world to see themselves as possible and represented and black culture as the center, not the side, not as the verb of a white experience. Okay. Okay. It, it becomes a powerful moment where people are then engaged in a universal conversation on what black identity is and what it means to be a person of color. He also goes on to say, but also, What is queer, but what also, what is queer when you don't name it? Is there anything different between me and you when you see these young men and their community on the screen? The reality is no, there is no difference. And uh, that's from Kevin Miller himself. Now that helped a little bit. I'm still going to have to go read it. I'm I'm with it though. I mean, I really enjoyed, uh, what was that one movie? Um, Moonlight, right? That's I mean, you know, I they're, trying, just, they're trying to do that, but there was there was there was issue there. I mean, like that kid went through a lot of shit. So, from what I know about writing stories, there's got to be it can't just be smooth sailing. There's got to be issues dealt with. There's got to be things discussed. There's got to be hurdles. There's got to be problems that a black queer person would go through so i'm hoping they would shed light on that kind of stuff but I'm, it seems like they will so well, I, I know i watch it i watch it well i i checked out the kickstarter a little bit and the uh they talk about the main character is um i there was a there was a scene moment specifically where he's at the pool he's uh you know he's sort of self-conscious about his body and you know just you know being around people and being in the pool and stuff like that he's there with his older brother who is from what i could gather heterosexual more the athletic type more the quote-unquote alpha male main character type um so there's all this sort of insecurity with that as well um and 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 that's where sort of that's a bit of a jump off point for where things are you know for the story 
I mean, listen, I'm going to definitely check it out. I think from a production standpoint, the fact that they were able to acquire double the amount of money is I'm always interested in how someone gets that done in terms of their process, what they had to go through. So to me, they've already won uh, in, in a certain phase. They just need to you know, finish the job with the execution, see it all the way through. Um, I'm definitely I'm going to check it out. It's a 20 minute short. <laughs> I gave Yasuke three hours. I can give this 20 minutes. Not a problem. I, I've been catching so much shit. And we posted something on the IG today that I've been catching shit, which has been it's been trending, actually. But, you know, it was a it's one of those memes where, like, there's a couple, but one of the from the couple is looking back at a girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. 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 So the 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 one that's getting the eye caught is invincible. Mm -hmm. The people looking back is black people. And Yasuke is looking like, what the fuck? Well, guess what? That's how I felt. That's it is what it is. I shouldn't have liked Invincible better than Yasuke. It's not my fault. It's not my fault the shit was trash or black. So there. Um let me get back to the so you just you just going out there posting the emotional shit, opinion shit without running it by me and shit. I'll see how it goes. I mean, I we agree. Fuck this. Right, that's so sad. But, I, I mean, but, you, you act like but, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I at least want to know. I at least want to know, like, oh, okay, niggas beefing over this, okay? It, it's, I'm all it's, for that, Joe. I'm all for that. I'm all for I'm that. saying, like... You want to have this conversation with somebody. Right, like, if it Anybody could be, does, it could be Steve Rogers, it could be Captain African America, nigga. I don't give a fuck. We can have we can just sit these niggas down. <laughs> Calling out nicknames. Nigga, we could bruh. We could talk to Palmdale P. I nigga, whoever. Stop. Stop. We're whoever. not going to Palmdale. We're not going to Palmdale. Palmdale ain't coming here. Neither is Lancaster. We are done going up that. Up that way to the freeway. Fuck, fuck all, all that. I'm, all I'm saying, all I'm saying, motherfuckers want to have a discussion about people having an opinion about some shit. Let's do that. Let's <laughs> do that. We could bring back angry Smurfs if we needed to, nigga. We could do it with all of them. All no, we got. They, they will pay. Man, they gonna ah. Uh, anyway, all right, pretty, you got us all pissed, and it's not your fault. It's it's really mine. Let's just keep moving. Um, so uh. B. Walt, you watch CNN, right? Every day. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, the name Jake Tapper ring a bell to you at all? Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. He he's uh he's into the geek shit, bro. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. But he he is one of the I don't I don't know the the proper term, but he does have a show. Him and some other person, and they do. You know the current events and stuff like that, so I'm familiar with them. I, I could point them out in the lineup. The show's solid, but it's just like every other CNN show. So, so, so I, I I don't watch CNN, but this came across my timeline, and um, he he goes hard in the paint. He's got an opinion that I kind of feel him on, and we'll we'll talk about it. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up a quote. Well, let me set it up. Let me give some context. There are some actors inedibly associated with a certain cinematic universe. But there are a handful of actors that have made the jump successfully between the two or others. Last week, CNN correspondent Jake Tapper has now taken a hard line against such crossovers. Quote, I think that if you are in the Marvel universe, then you have to have the ethics and the strength to, to, to not then go into the DC universe as an actor and both, and or both. You can't be you can't be J. Jonah Jameson's Peter Parker's boss, and then turn around and you're Commissioner Gordon for Batman. You can't do it, Simmons. You can't do it. It's not fair. You can't be the you can't be one of Aquaman's evil gremlin fishmen and then turn around and be the Green Goblin fighting Spider Man. You can't be Daredevil and Batman Affleck. You have to pick one. And I'm actually an unapologetic Affleck fan. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. And he's a good Batman. But I'm sorry, he was Daredevil first. <laughs> oh, I have to ask, is this satire? Is he being serious? He, is listen, satire? 
Um, the answer is yes, bro. Vanity and Apollona. The the answer is yes. Um, he 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 was being satire, but you and I both knows as many comics as we don't fucking dealt with. Not not myself excluded. Every joke's got some truth to it. He meant what he was saying, bro. I absolutely know he meant what he was saying. He just put it in the form of a joke, in my opinion. <laughs> but he's right, no? I mean, what do you think? Uh, I don't have a problem with it. As long as they, as long as they do the character justice. These are actors, man. Like, that's what they're supposed to do. But what I will say is, we do have a lot of up and coming folks who need a shot at shit. So, exactly, you know, give them a shot. But an actor's job is to pretend to be somebody else and get paid to do the shit. You know, and the thing about it, let's be honest, they usually do better in certain roles than other ones. Ben Affleck was better at Batman than he was at Daredevil because Daredevil was a trash movie. Daredevil was a trash movie. Ryan but Reynolds was better as, as Deadpool than he was as Green Lantern. Green Lantern was a trash movie. Well, okay, but see, but that, but but see, that's this is kind of where I feel him. But he's all he actually didn't bring this up. Remember, he was Deadpool first, actually, before he was the shitty Green Lantern. So he okay. came back to do Deadpool. Like there, so there's like there's like pre Green Lantern Deadpool, then there's post Green Lantern Deadpool. They're like two different people. It's like a Ryan Reynolds multiverse within the multiverse. Multiverse. You know what I'm saying? I, I actually, like I said, the actors, I don't have an issue with. I mean, Samuel L. Jackson has been one of the baddest fucking Jedi and one of the baddest characters in the MCU. Like, I don't have a problem with that. I have no problem with it. I don't want to have a problem with this. Um, so, like, on the joking side, or more of a, I guess, just as a fan side, like, it kind of pulled me, like, when I, you know, uh, Infinity War and Endgame, Josh Brolin being Thanos, to me, Infinity War is our Empire Strikes Back, in my no, opinion, because because no, the bad Empire, guy won. Empire Strikes Back is my Empire Strikes Back, brother. It, I said our. You you talking your? It, there's 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 that pronoun trouble again. We talked about this in the fucking. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. So when he was being uh, when he was in as Cable in the Deadpool movie, it kind of took me out of it. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not, because I just wow, wanted to be good, good at it. He was, yeah, I mean, well, it's Cable. You could have got any salty-haired white man. It could have been the wrestler. Kevin Nash could have been Cable. Like, it didn't have to be Brolin. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he did a great job. But that goes to my other point. There's, most of these characters are, are, are white males. Exactly. So, oh. <laughs> you can kind of just swap them in and out for each other. So when uh before he actually did it, I didn't have I didn't want um Chris Evans to be Captain America because he had already been Johnny Storm. And I know that's a different that's Fox to MCU, but that's what I was thinking in the beginning. Now I got two of my favorite MCU movies out of him because of that. So I'm gonna shut the fuck up. But at the time I had an issue with it, is what I'm saying. That's all. At the time there was no MCU in the sense that they were trying to fit the Fantastic Four into some sort of uh, continual, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't have a problem with him doing Johnny Storm. So you're not, so in terms of Jake Tapper is a piece of shit. The thing is, no, I like Jake Tapper. The thing is this, if they were doing the MCU at that time and Fantastic Four fell into it, then he, of course, he would not have been cast as well. So it wouldn't have happened. And just because, I mean, and, and these actors that are crossing the line, going to DC and doing shit, 
going to Marvel and doing shit, going to Lucas and doing shit. Like, I don't have a problem with that shit. Let them do whatever they want. They fucking actors. That's what it's for. The only thing that I would like is for, for up and coming actors, specifically those of the minority nature, to get shots and shit. Because you know what happens with, with minority actors is that, you know, you get a handful of them and then you see the niggas in everything. In everything. Right. But there's a lot of us out there. Well, not us, but there's a lot of black actors or minority actors in general out there that are talented. Give them a shot uh, to do some stuff, so they ain't they so they don't end up doing shitty TV shows that end up on BET Plus or all black. <laughs> yeah, <Some favorite>. shitty <laughs> apps. <laughs> no, you get what I'm saying? Like, there's there's a lot there's a lot of act, up and coming actors that, that that would be just as good. But what happens with minority actors a lot of times and they're, they're trying to stop it now i mean they're trying to ch- change the scenarios now but what it is is they're going to put the ones in there that they know for a fact are bankable right they're willing yep. to they're willing to give a shot to these new white boys all the time like who is that one the dude who totally ruined fucking gambit every movie they put this dude in was a fucking flop Taylor Kirshner or whatever, Taylor, whatever the fuck his name is. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, he was, okay. He was he was the new white boy. He was the new white boy. They were slapping this nigga in everything. And every movie he was in was trash. And I actually thought he was a solid actor, but he was no different than the other 15 white boys. You know what I'm saying? See, but, now we got to... But, but what Hollywood does, what Hollywood does, I'm going to tell you, what Hollywood does is they take these motherfuckers and they try to make you swallow these niggas and they try to make them starve. They push them down your throat and try to make them starve. But that's only with the white boys. You got a shit ton of actors of, of color across the board that you could be doing this with too. And they don't really do that. They just take the ones that's already bankable and throw them out there. There's no reason why. And I love Denzel, but there's no reason why there should have ever been talked about Denzel being fucking Magneto. You want to make Magneto black in some weird world? Fine, but it don't got to be Denzel. There's a lot. Of, and Anthony Mackie is becoming that too. I'm starting to see him. I'm starting to see him in everything. I like Anthony Mackie. I do. Oh. I like him, and I'm glad he's doing a lot of work. But there's a lot of other actors out there that can do some shit that ain't getting no kind of chance. Like, give them a chance. That's my only issue with it. Other than that, going back to what you said, you know, if you shit, if you Batman and Daredevil and you do it well, fuck it, do it. Who cares? Um, for me, uh, you're absolutely right about like. The lack of opportunities, 100%. Um, I just, uh, I don't know. It's kind of a weird thing because it's it's almost like a meta thing that shouldn't be meta, but it is meta because it's fucking real life. So that's just kind of where my head is with it. Uh, but all jokes aside, Jake Tapper, Jake Tapper was being dead fucking serious. That's that's my full point on that. Um, all right, let's see. We got one more main thing to discuss, and we got a few quickies I want to go over. Uh, let's see. Netflix. Let's go back to them. Really, really, really wants to get into video games. Um, according to Polygon.com, Netflix is reportedly searching for an executive to head up an expansion into video games and have approached multiple veteran game industry executives regarding the position to lead to the expansion. d would you play a Netflix video game? It's dope. Why not? But it's got to be dope. I mean, what, what, my, my question, there's so many avenues that they can go with this. My question is which way they're going to try to go. Are they trying to do are they going to try to do the console wars? Are they going to try to be a supplement to the console? Are they going to have like rentals through Netflix? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many ways they could go with that. Like you develop Netflix specific games and then you have to have the Netflix game app to get to the game, you know? Right. So, so the, the, the best comparison according to the report is uh, the, uh, 
the Apple subscription model with the bundle arcade um, where you pay four ninety nine dollars for X amount of games and stuff like that. Uh, now, how does that sort of tie into your current Netflix subscription? Don't know. Uh, I don't know if the password I have is going to allow me to go, you know, give me the option to put a, a control in. Because that's another thing, too. Like, are these games mobile? Is this something between... Is this something that's a, that's sort of an extension of the uh, the app, the, the streaming app itself? That's the other question I have as well. Yeah, that shit, um, that shit is... Uh, that's what I'm thinking. Because you know what Netflix does? You would go on Netflix and be like, oh, hell yeah, I'm going to watch that shit at some point. You get back to it, the shit is gone. Is Netflix going to do that shit too? Oh, yeah, we got this hot-ass game. Then when I finally have time to play it, they're going to take it away? Right. So I'm playing this membership for shit that I can't play because I got there two days late. <laughs> on you know top, I'm, I'm playing my membership on top of my membership, and they're telling me my shit out of out, out is out for the weekend. Damn. Right. Like the game ain't in there no more. They how yeah. many times have they done that? Like they had the entire Indiana Jones, bro. I got the shit already, but it was right. the fact that it was on Netflix, and I was like, man, I could just turn this motherfucker on. I guess to nope. turning it on at two in the morning, the shit's gone. So then now I gotta go. Back into the black as fuck archives at two in the morning. I'm tripping over shit, can't see nothing to come get the shit. See, that's what Netflix does to you. They fucking cock tease you with shit. Oh, yeah, we got this movie that you've been wanting to watch, my nigga, and then you get to it and the shit gone. They better not do that with the games. They better not do that shit with the games. Because right that now, there's too many. Right now, we got three powerhouses in the game that have shut that shit down. Ain't nobody going to, if you, if they do it wrong, who's going to give a fuck? How many times? Have 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 people or not people, but these entities try to create game systems and the shit just flop and it didn't matter because the consumer already knows. You got PlayStation, you got Nintendo, and you got Xbox. If you console, then you got the PC for the PC gamers. If you go portable, the switch is both. The it's, switch is home. The switch will switch on you and will fuck you up both ways. And you got the mobile shit. And you got the mobile shit on the phones now. So, like, if Netflix is going to do it, they better do it right because at the end of the day, it's just going to be an idea that never comes to to full fruition because if it sucks, no one's really going to give a shit. It's going to be like like the Dreamcast. Oh, oh, great idea. Hey, bro, just chill all of that. Great idea. Just relax. Chill all of that, B. You ain't got to bring up the Dreamcast. Look, if it wasn't for the Dreamcast, we wouldn't have 2K. But... Come on, the Dreamcast was so cold when it first came out. Niggas was on that shit, and then what happened? Why you got to bring up old wounds, B? Like, when well, nobody even talking about the Dreamcast, you got to bring up fucking Sega. Now I got to talk more shit about Yasuke just to get my mind out of this shit about the Dreamcast. God damn it. Sega. God. Sega. Sega. <laughs> Motherfucking goddamn Dreamcast. Best day one launch ever. Soul Calibur, Power Stone, uh, NFL 2K, Sonic the Hedgehog, ready to rumble. Day one, you pieces of shit. <laughs> and then 2K came shortly after that. The ball, the ball game. Right. The basketball game. Well, Iverson right. on the cover. They AI did. on the cover. Nigga. <laughs> but think of all the but think of all the other systems that came out, came and went that you don't even remember. There was a system that came out by I can't even remember Panasonic. I can't even remember who created yeah. it. But they the had 3-0. like a, they had a fake ass Legend of Zelda game on that shit. And I peeped it at, at uh Sam Club when I was a shorty. Like, man, this shit look cold. Six months later, you didn't even see that shit no more. Bye bye. Bye bye. So the thing is, go ahead, Netflix. Hire that whole fucking branch of motherfuckers to sit around and come up with ideas. But if they don't do it right, it's just going it's just gonna fade into obscurity and no one's gonna give a shit about it. Well, so I think the main reason why they're doing it is is because they know the streaming space is getting crowded. Like Disney is fucking them up. That's that's the main reason. And they're trying to figure out how to pivot. And then even still, you're still dealing with Amazon who I think I don't think they're at the top of the list, but they have specific shows that you are coming back to see. 
The Boys, I'm coming back to see that. Invincible, I'm coming back to see that. And I am not alone in that in that yo, in that situation. Yo, you got to give Amazon more credit. Amazon got shows, nigga. Like Amazon got a lot of shit, bro. I'm just saying for a me, a lot no, of shit. <laughs> my point is that all you, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you on that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm actually agreeing with you. But you, but that just is to my point about Netflix is like they don't have that monopoly like they did for like what 15 years where it was just them on the block. Netflix. And they could, and they could do what they were start? doing. Netflix. 11, 11, 12 years ago. I remember Netflix, my first moved out of here, I was introduced to Netflix. Netflix. You still get the disc. Right. So you're talking at least 08, if not, if not okay. earlier than that. So I came out in 2010. That's when I started fucking with Netflix. When's the last time you saw a blockbuster? <laughs> That's when Netflix started. <laughs> 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 and, and right now, truth be told, right now, like like my my opinion, my my hierarchy of, of of streaming services, Amazon Prime is almost at the top. Amazon Prime is in my top three. You know why? You know why? And it's not okay. So people get mad because it's like, oh well, you can find anything you want, but if it's not read on that on that free on that free list, you got to pay like a small amount of money to rent it. But the thing is, you'd be doing that shit anyway if you was going to say a blockbuster or a red box or whatever. Yep. But they have a shit ton of movies, just like Netflix. They have a uh, uh, they have a shit ton of fucking shows like Netflix. And then you had an option to type in whatever you want, and and they'll let you. If they have it, you can rent it. If it's not on that list of things that you can watch for free. So I would actually lean towards Amazon Prime over Netflix right now. Because Netflix, no, seriously, because Netflix will tell your ass, oh, yeah, we got fucking, we got Lord of the Rings on this shit, and then it ain't there. <laughs> you, go to Amazon, you, go, you go to Amazon Prime, oh, yeah, we had it for free. We moved it out of the free section, but it's still here. Not saying I want to have to drop extra money because I'm already paying the, the service. The is there. The, but the option is there. You know what I'm saying? You don't even have an option with Netflix. Netflix. The niggas, if you don't look, you got to go looking to find out what they not finna show no more, which pisses me off. So like you actually got to look that shit up. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was trying to watch. I forget what I was trying to watch. Total Recall been on Netflix for, for fucking ever. And the day that I'm like, I'm going to watch Total Recall. Yes, I got Total Recall right here. We know that. But I'm like. I'm sitting on the couch. I'm lazy. I don't feel like going into Black as Fuck headquarters to pick up Total Recall. So it turned out they don't have Total Recall. It's just movies like Total Recall. And it's all these Arnold Schwarzenegger movies that I don't give a fuck about. So Netflix ain't even at the top no more for me, man. It's like right in the middle. <laughs> Tell them why you mad, son. Tell them why you Netflix, mad. Netflix is right in the middle. It's, it's, it's <laughs> it's above the Disney app, in my opinion, but that's it's above Disney. You got you got Netflix above Disney for one reason. What's that reason? Because they got more. They have more Netflix originals that I watch than Disney originals that I watch. Uh, just give them some time. Wait, Man, that's what I'm saying, Bro, <laughs> Hey, it's a fluctuation. It's a fluctuating scale. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is. Last year, Netflix made it to the finals. This year, Netflix got their ass whipped by 30 tonight. <laughs> Are you calling them the Lakers? <laughs> no, these niggas, no. Netflix is the Miami Heat, bro, right now. Oh, I heard about that. Someone niggas said getting, like, they need. <laughs> so it was like, do they know they have a game tonight? <laughs> but you get, you get what I'm saying, though. It's like Netflix is that shit for a long, amount, long time, but then. Like, nigga, don't tease me with shit. If I want to watch it, you say it's there. Let it be there. Like, don't. I don't want to have to walk across the to the West Wing at a fucking estate to get this shit. Like, okay, I'm done renting. I'm done renting. Oh, and I uh, HBO Max, of course. That's that's a that's that's pretty high up because it's got a bunch of shit on it from back when we shorty. So Netflix ain't at the ain't at the top no more, dude. I would say out of all the streaming apps that I have. 
Hey, HBO is my number one, bro. Fuck all the dumb shit. I'm gonna say HBO is my number three. But Netflix, out of all the streaming apps I have, Netflix is near in the bottom. I still like them. He, Netflix gonna come off the bench and give me six, four, and three, but Netflix ain't my starting point guard no more. Nope. Too many turnovers, man. Too many motherfucking turnovers, man. It's it's Jason. It's Dallas Maverick, Jason Kidd, the third time. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Why is Jason Kidd shooting threes? Oh. Oh, it's that Jason kid. Okay, okay, okay. I, it, for me, HBO Max, Disney Plus, and I'm putting Amazon personally above Netflix. I watch Netflix for the anime, but that's just out of convenience because I don't feel like going to what's it, uh, VRV or and Crunchyroll. Their infrastructure stay like on some like crackhead shit. Um, but. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, Castlevania was beastie. Some of the best I've ever seen. And that's an exclusive, to your point, on Netflix. Um, but it's just... Uh, yeah, I mean, I think they set they they set up their app that way where it's like, you can't find the things you're actually looking for. You got all these kind of things that you might want to see. And you just... You spend more time scrolling than actually picking something in a, and watching the shit. And um, yeah, fuck all that. Yeah, and I always feel I always feel like I'm in crunch time with these niggas. Like if I see something I want, I gotta get back. It's like I got a right. life, I got right. company, I got a business to run, I got other shit I'm doing, I got family shit, I got dogs to take. Like nigga, all that shit. And then Netflix want to be like, oh well, we just took Total Recall. Oh fuck y'all niggas did. Like fuck y'all. The only reason why Netflix is still on my shit is because of the originals. That's the only thing holding on to it. Because Netflix has good originals and good original movies. Like Snyder, they just released the Snyder movie on uh, last Friday. It was pretty good. Army of the Dead. What'd you think? You liked it? Eh, you know, it's B. It's solid B zombie movie, you know. Lots of guns, lots of shooting, lots of dead motherfuckers. <coughs> so, right on. Yeah, so that's the only reason why Netflix is even still on the list because of the originals. Like the movies that they have, it's like, come on, man. Some of this shit on Netflix is trash, bro. The movies? The movies. I saw this black movie on Netflix, man. It looked like niggas filmed that shit with an iPhone 6. A 6. So a my fucking 6, nigga. A 6. My old phone. It was terrible. The actors was bad. It was some black movie. So, like, Netflix, like, the movie movie, like, nah, it's just the original. It's just the original. <laughs> Because <laughs> Amazon Prime got mostly the same shit, and whatever they don't have, like I said, you can look that shit up. One way or another, they'll keep you there. Like if they don't have it at, accessible for free, you can still, you know, do the rental, whatever the case might be. And a, you know, rental ain't nothing. Um, you know, I can. Yeah, name- I'm- My bad. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just, you just got me thinking about it. When you're talking about the, even the Amazon Prime Originals, I can name, I can start firing off Amazon Prime, Prime Originals right now that if you haven't seen, you should watch them. We already know about Invincible. We already know about The Boys, but they got The Man in the High Castle. They got, I, Steve, oh, I love that. They got, they got Sneaky Pete. They got them. They got, uh, the one, they got the one movie about, uh, I mean, they got the one series about the, the, the Nazi hunters. It's based on a true story. It took old girl from the shot. She's in this shit. They got so many involved. Oh, man, like they got the, yeah, they got the Jack Ryan shit on there. They got Marvelous a lot of Miss stuff, Mazel. Dude. I haven't is seen funny. that yet, but I heard it's good. That's what if if you're a comedian, you need to watch that show. Absolutely. If you say you about the shits with some stand up, you need everybody needs to watch that show. It's a really good show. Um, now I. You hey listen, it ain't just Invincible and the boys, but those are two very significant reasons why it's number three. Let me make that clear. <laughs> um nah, but uh you know, Netflix, I think they just see the writing on the wall when it comes to it, like because Disney's not gonna stop, clearly. We've already discussed that, even if they don't get DC <laughs> within the next two years or some shit. They're not going to stop. Amazon has Lex Luthor type money behind it, so they're not going to stop. 
Um, Amazon has Lex Luthor that owns the motherfucker. The nigga looks just like him. He looks just Lex like Luthor, him, bro. That's Lex Luthor. That is he. He hates Superman more than I do. Um, and then HBO Max, like HBO Max is. Uh, I, just, I just love everything about it, and they're not gonna stop either. They got the new Batman the animated series coming out, as well as the new Superman animated series dropping. And that's just the cartoon the animated shit. They're going to keep giving you the movies and they own originals. So, no, Netflix is just like, all right, how can we supplement the money that we used to get just being the only kid on the block? Um, like, like I said, they are, the Netflix original is fire. Like, like if you get into a next Netflix original, it's good. I like those. But like I said, that's really the only thing holding it there because the movie selection is like, oh, unless yeah, it's, it's, an, it's, unless it's an unless it's an original Netflix movie, then it's like okay, but right. the, like the the collection of the other stuff, like now nah, I'm cool. Right on. Although I think the Pelican Brief is on there, and I do want to watch that. I better watch it tonight because it ain't gonna be there tomorrow. I'm about to say twelve midnight, nigga. <laughs> right. The pumpkin comes back. Um, Here are movies like The Pelican Brief, Training Day. Nigga, no, it's not. It's nothing like <laughs> it. But it has Denzel Washington in it. Which they took off. Nigga, Training Day was on Netflix for fucking years. And all of a sudden, I wanted to watch the shit and it was gone. <laughs> of course, again, yes, we have it. But don't have me looking for the shit when it was there two days prior. And I'm sitting there, you know. You know how like the 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 the, the Apple TV remote is all sensitive and shit. So my very ass thinking, fucking sensitive. My, my <laughs> ass thinking I typed the shit in wrong. Maybe I spelled training wrong. No, nigga, the shit just not in there. Like, come on, come on, Netflix, come on. Oh man, I remember that fucking remote. That shit is. <laughs> That, is, that remote is a touchy motherfucking boy. You're better off holding the microphone and, and, and speaking into it, but if you have an accent, then you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Come on, Joe. I'm sorry. I don't understand. <laughs> Bitch, you hear me? Come on, Joe. Come on, Joe. It's a <laughs> pornographic film. We do not show pornographic films on Netflix. I didn't start that. I didn't <laughs> and let the, hey, 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 don't let your boy come over there, neither. Don't let your boy come over there. Don't say his name. Come on, you want to watch some shit. <laughs> don't, say, don't say his name. <laughs> 30, pe- 30 people are watching. Ah, shit. All right, let's get out of here. We got a couple quick notes to just go over. Um, give me some one-liners on this uh, real quick, uh, B. New Virtual Fighter 5 is reported to be a part of PlayStation Plus. June's update. The new one? Yes, sir. Uh, well, if it's a part of PlayStation Plus, then that shit is going to my motherfucking catalog. Because it'll be free, nigga. Right. Even if um, it's trash, it'll be free. It is not trash. It is the greatest fighting game ever created because it's the only fighting game that came out fucking 20 years ago that allows you to guard a hit as well as defend a throw simultaneously. No other game has ever been able to do that, and it's been over 20 fucking years since they did it. I'm super excited about this. Let's keep moving. Um, Black Lady Sketch Show for HBO Max. Woo-hoo-hoo. Just got renewed for season three. Be what you think. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. I want to give this moment to shout out for Team Italia, uh, somebody we worked with on multiple occasions. Uh, she is super funny, amazing to work with. Um, I, I haven't seen season two yet, so let me just be full disclosure with that. But if she ain't on that show, fuck that show. She need to be on that show. If the team wants to be on that show, put her on Black Lady Sketch Show. That's just my little opinion. Let's keep it moving. Agreed. Um, uh, speaking of Zack Snyder, uh, he will begin teaching filmmaking in a new YouTube series on Netflix. How about that? <laughs> How about that? How about that? Leave it up to Zack Snyder to do the shit in the roundabout way. Just jump on Masterclass, nigga. I got shit right. to do. I can right. listen to you on Masterclass. I right. can't sit down and watch you for four hours on Netflix. But way <laughs> to go. Way to go. If you, if you want to make brooding, cryptic, 
and gray movies, this is for you. And guess what? I am brooding, cryptic, and gray. I will be all over this fucking shit. Moving on. Let's go, Zack Snyder. Snyder cut everything. Um, Square Enix and Team Koei are working on an action RPG named Final Fantasy Origin. B. Waltz, your thoughts? Okay. <laughs> uh, look, look, the only Final Fantasy that really matters to me is Final Fantasy VII, so all the rest of it, whatever. Right, right. <laughs> um, Team Koei fucked up the uh, home console, Dissidia, so fuck them and this game. Let's keep it moving. Uh, let's see. Konami, yeah, yeah, teases outsourcing plans for new IPs following Getsuma Fumadin's uh, reveal this earlier this week. Um, we've been t- how long we've been talking about this? B, <laughs> you're gonna have to remind me. Konami is Metal Gear Solid. No, 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 no. I know, I know who Konami is, but but okay, new IP. So what's that? Mean to the rest of the world. So, famous terms, non geek terms. So, essentially, you know, Konami doesn't make games anymore themselves. They make fucking pachinko machines and some shit like that. Oh, God. Like, but they still own all the IP properties to Metal Gear, to mm-hmm. Castlevania, to Silent Hill, to Zoe, Zone of Fucking Enders. And they're never yeah. going to make these games again. That's stupid, but okay. So, so how do you feel about them finally teasing the thought that they're going to outsource the IPs that they currently own? Uh, if we talking Metal Gear, nigga, y'all better sit down and shake hands and hug and get Kojima back in there. Because when they try to do Metal Gear without him, that shit be goofy. That shit be goofy. So, like, if you talking Metal Gear... I think I could speak for the fanboys. Bring homie back or leave the shit alone. The rest of the stuff, I'm not really... Zona Enders, that one, okay, I can see... Yeah, I mean, because I, I fucks with that when I was younger. But Metal Gear, you better bring the mastermind back. Sit down, suck his dick, whatever it is that he needs. So... Develop that. So if if you're going to do these, these outsourcings, you're talking about a Dale, then you got to do Metal Gear Solid. And that means Zoe comes with it because that's the same guy. So they got to make it happen. Let's keep it pushing. All right. Um, one more on the quickies. Uh, Taika Watatiti, Rita Ora, and Tessa Thompson <laughs> were caught triple kissing on the set of Thor 4. Uh, B. Walt, <laughs> what are your thoughts? He's one of my favorite directors. I love him, Joe. He did uh, he did the, the last Thor movie, but he also did a movie called uh, What the Fuck? What We Do in the in the Dark? Yeah, I think that's what it's called about the the vampires that live in that flat. Yeah, he's one of my he's one of my favorites too. That does not surprise me one bit. He um, he reminds what? me he reminds me of a homie that's just funny as hell and walks away with all the pussy. Don't have to look good. Don't have to look good. Don't have to have no money. The nigga could be sleeping at the crib on a mattress with candles. But the nigga funny, so he always walking out with the baddest bitch. That's what he reminds me of. So, um, Thor Ragnarok is one of my favorite MCU movies. Yeah, me too. Uh, And he's kissing two girls that he casted in his own movie that he's directing the sequel to. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I support this message entirely. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. See what right. I did there? He's, he's, thank he's, you. He's like. He's Stephon, winning in real life and the right. fictional one as well. It's Stefan Urkel. <laughs> uh, homeboy from Revenge of the Nerds when he finally got the chick. Have you seen Revenge of the Nerds? It's been. I mean, you talk about single digits, but yeah. Remember, yeah. homie, homie, he, he rocked a costume and he took old girl into this room and he started fucking with shorty and then she was stuck on him after the fact. But before that, she didn't pay him no attention because he was a fucking geek. But then after that, he was like superhero geek. Right, right. So, Stefan Urkel, superhero geek. 
The guy. Oh, yeah, he's he's on that level with them. We love you, bro. All right. Um, so that's it for the show. I do want to make one more quick announcement. Um, Shit. Well, this is... We're, hold on, hold on. Just <laughs> give me a sec. Got to get to my notes. Sorry about that. Uh, I want to get the name right. Uh, Kintaro... Kintaro Muria, who is the creator of the Berserk manga and anime series, uh, tragically passed away over the this last week. Um, Want to give you your flowers, bro. Uh, B. Walt, I don't know if you're familiar with Berserk, the anime, um, but you played Dreamcast, and that was one of the launch games for Dreamcast. That was... That was the Devil May Cry before Devil May Cry dropped. The the Berserk title. I know um, the, I know the Berserk was an origin for a lot of shit that came after, but I didn't I never really fucked with Berserk. I, I, I love the anime. It, it's 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 one of the best I've ever seen. If 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 Game of Thrones was an anime, that's what Berserk would be. It's it's on that level, minus the last season of Game of Thrones. Always minus the last season. That never happened. But um, all jokes aside, uh, strength and blessings to him and his family. Uh, thank you for your art, your creativity. Um, we, man, me and my friends have had so much fun with Berserk over the years. Like, and even and everybody who knows me knows I hate English dub. But I've been able to watch Berserk English dub back in the day because the voice acting, the casting was awesome. And then I had the uh, the box set. And they had all the deleted scenes with the takes. And the guys that were playing uh, Guts, Griffith, man, they were they were awesome. The guy who plays Griffith, um, who's the pretty boy of the crew, is can fucking sing. So he just felt like singing Whitney Houston in the middle of a take. And they kept the whole thing and they put it on the DVD. And we just had fun with the brother. We would you had you talking about like grown black men six foot up, like singing their hearts out to that theme song. Like I've done it with several of my folks. Like, so thank you, bro. Thank you for leaving us with your art. I'm sorry you don't get to finish your, uh, your series, but we appreciate it. And, uh, you know, we want to give you your flowers. It's coming from black as fuck. That's our show for today. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Alexander Safa. Um, my other host who's gone black for some reason, uh, B. Walt. We are Brotherhood Language Approaching Conversation Kinetically About Fiction. This is Black as Fuck. Every Monday, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we will be here doing our show. You can te- check us out at www.blackafhq.com to uh, join us and join the show live. Um, content on Twitter, Instagram at Black AF, which is B-L-A-C-K-A-Z-F-U-K. Those are the handles for the Instagram. Those are the handles for the, uh, the Twitter. The videos will be up on our YouTube channel, our home network, Moonshine TV. Moon, shine with the Y, TV. One word, Moonshine TV. So the 30 people that are listening, you can watch it this week as well. Strength and blessings and uh, good night. b Walt, anything you want to say before? You, am I by myself? It's just me? <laughs> no, you're not. I'm okay. Good. All right. I'm going to learn all that stuff one day, though. Hopefully you will. Hopefully you will. Put it on the test. Brother, brother, conversation kinetically about fiction. This is Black